W Investigations. Yeah, yeah, yes. Um, and what they would do is they would have a planchette and use it with a writing tool and do automatic writing with it. Oh, wow. So that was the earliest form of spirit board. I forget which dynasty. It was long, like 400 BC or something. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, and then uh, also there are other examples of it in other cultures. Um, fast forward to about 1400 and they started, uh, they used playing cards up to this point um, for a lot of divination and um, they started formulating like kind of a, a, what different symbols meant and all of that and um, it's, they're starting to get interested in occultism um, more towards the enlightenment. Mm -hmm. But um, when the spirit board became a commercial property, um, was in the 1800s, right after the Civil War, where there was a lot of families that lost a lot of people, oh. and they wanted to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. So there was a great interest. So um, they developed um, the spirit board, um, and you know you can of course make your own with just a paper with letters and an upturned glass. That mm -hmm. was like one of the earliest things, but. Um, Long story short, they created a commercial one, um, and it's a really interesting story, but I, I won't go into too much detail. Mm -hmm. uh, they got a patent for it, and um, it became, by the 1950s, it was the most popular home parlor game, more than Monopoly. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah. So yeah. all of this stuff happened like in a 20 years period, I would mm -hmm. say. And people became fearful of these things instead of like having an interest in, you know, experimenting. We're going at 100. Is the volume, the volume up? Yeah, I hate to see I'm so blind. Here with us, 
you're a girl. Is that you, Jimmy?
Who's that? We heard you. What's your name?